Christian from Media Better One and Knits here today to kick off a new series of videos here on the Media Better One and Knits YouTube channel. I'm calling this series of videos Sweater Workshop and I'm going to use these to walk you through step by step how to knit different sweater styles. Um, so of course patterns <laughs> exist and no two sweaters are exactly alike. Um, but the basic construction of certain sweaters works in certain ways, raglan, um, drop shoulder, saddle shoulder, circular yoke. The basic elements of the construction are pretty much the same across patterns. And that is what I'm going to be going through with you. Uh, so I am kicking things off with the saddle shoulder. Uh, this is an example of a saddle shoulder sweater. This is my long, long time pullover. Um, and I decided to start with saddle shoulder because it is a less common sweater construction. Um, but one that is also, um, I don't want to say complicated, but more involved. There are um, a lot of steps uh, to starting the sweater. Uh, and if you've never knit one before, you just may not be clear on how it all comes together. And of course you can, you know, go through the pattern, follow the directions um, and just see what happens. But sometimes um, it's easier to have an idea of how things are going to progress before you get started. And so that is the idea with this sweater workshop series to demonstrate the basic construction of these different styles so that you can kind of visualize it before you get started on a pattern, just to give you kind of a better idea of um, the steps that you're going to be following and what's going to be happening and what it looks like. So in order to do this workshop, what I'm going to be doing is recording and then sharing videos over the next few weeks as I work through a new sweater design that I am working on, obviously a saddle shoulder, um, and demonstrating each step as I go through it. So initially, these videos are going to be released as I uh, record and edit them. But then uh, once they're all done, which should be in about October, which is when I'm planning to publish the pattern, then you will have an entire series. I will create um, a playlist specifically for that. So for those who um, maybe are watching this um, not in, in real time, but later, you'll have access to all of those videos at one time as you are working through your sweater. Uh, in the meantime, if you are interested in a saddle shoulder sweater, I have two saddle shoulder sweaters, saddle shoulder sweater patterns <laughs> uh, in my portfolio, and I will link both of them uh, below. They are called Diego and the other sweater that I just showed you a long, long time. I also have a saddle shoulder t-shirt design that is currently available exclusively from Knit Picks, and I will include a link to that as well. So again, we are starting with saddle shoulder sweater, and without further ado, I will present to you step one, which is the saddles. Okay, so saddle shoulder sweater, as you might imagine, the very first thing you do is knit the saddles. The entire rest of the sweater is built from here down. So you'll begin your saddle shoulder project by knitting uh, what is essentially a rectangle. It may have um, some different stitch patterns. It may have no stitch pattern at all. Um, but what this is basically doing is covering the top of the shoulder right to the edge where a sleeve would start. So you will start your project by knitting two of these. So for our example sweater, I have um, one saddle in progress and the other one has been finished. As I said, you will start your project by knitting two of these. Um, depending on the pattern of your sweater, your saddles may be knit at a tighter gauge. You really want this to be a very sturdy piece of your sweater because the entire rest of the sweater is gonna be built from this. So essentially, the saddle is going to wrap around the top of the shoulder. One edge is going to be the neck edge, and then the other one is where you will add a sleeve later. So in this case, uh, my saddles are just a uh, simple twisted rib. 
This gives them a little bit of stretch, but because they of the twisted stitches, they're also quite firm. Uh, and you can see with my completed one that I've got one cast on edge, and then I have a set of live stitches. Once you're done your saddle, you usually are gonna put the live stitches on hold because it's gonna make it easier to join your sleeve later. Uh, and in this particular case, I'm going to be knitting the seamless set-in sleeve. So that is, um, I'm going to want to have live stitches there. If perhaps you were actually sewing in a set-in sleeve, you may not leave these live stitches. But in this case, that is what I am doing. When you cast on for your saddle, um, my recommendation is to use just a regular long tail cast on because you are gonna come back here and pick up stitches later. And so you wanna cast on um, that is easy to pick up stitches up from because here, this is gonna be your neck edge. So you're gonna pick up collar stitches here. When I cast on for many projects, I will work that tail end in on the first row. I would also suggest not doing that because it makes it, again, more difficult to pick up stitches there later. So just go ahead and leave, you know, something of a tail here, and then you're gonna have um, a good spot to weave it in later because this is um, where part of your collar and then the back of the neck are gonna be. So as I said, um, if your project is a seamless set and sleeve sweater, you're gonna leave live stitches at the end most likely uh, rather than having to pick up stitches because it's going to make a neater transition into the sleeve. Your pattern, of course, is going to tell you the size of your saddle, but for reference, you want it to be, assuming, uh, again, a set-in sleeve sweater, and there are some other styles you can do with a saddle shoulder, uh, even a drop shoulder, but I would say that most of them are some form of a set-in sleeve. This edge here, you don't want this to extend past your shoulder bone where a sleeve cap would start. So that it should hit right at the edge of your shoulder and it should not be so long that it starts to fold down onto your shoulder um, unless that is the particular style of the sweater that you are knitting. But for a set-in sleeve, you want this edge to end right at that kind of uh, bony part of your shoulder. All right, I'm gonna pop in here real quick because I thought this would be easier to visualize on a human being. So when we're talking about the length of your saddle, it can vary depending on my hair, how close or far away you want the collar to come in at the neck. But regardless, you want it to end at this bony part right here because that is where the sleeve is gonna start unless you are specifically doing a drop saddle shoulder, which is a thing um, and is possible. But if you are working as we will be in this case, a set in sleeve, a seamless set in sleeve, you want your saddle to end right about where this bone is so that the sleeve can cover this fleshy part of your shoulder right here. That's the sleeve cap that's gonna go over that part. So your saddle is going to end right kind of at that bone. It may start closer or further away from the neck, but it's pretty much, again, for a, seam, a set and sleeve, it's gonna end at that kind of bone there. So if you are um, perhaps trying to modify a pattern, that is something to keep in mind. Now this still may vary in length, depending on how wide your neck is, because the distance in between these two is the distance the width of your neck minus whatever collar is eventually gonna be put onto your sweater. So you might still have a very short saddle um, if you, know, you have a very wide neck. Most likely though, it's going to be uh, neither super wide nor super tight. Uh, and the space in between these two saddles is ultimately going to be the space that is for your neck. So you start your project by knitting your two saddles uh, according to your pattern. Your, depending on your size. There will be some variation in the width and length of this, but actually not too much um, because in terms of you know, the size of the human body, the, the length of this part of your 
uh, of the top of your shoulder and the width of the top of your shoulder doesn't actually vary too much. Um, so there may be minor differences for size, but most likely it's going to be, you know, something like this that's, that's maybe three inches wide, two and a half, three inches wide, and then four, maybe a little bit more for larger sizes, five inches long. You're going to knit two of those. You can see mine is in still in progress, my second one. And then when you are done, you're going to start building the rest of the yoke of your sweater. I'll be getting into that more uh, in the next video. But essentially what you're going to do, you're going to have these two saddles. And as I said, this space here in between, that's where your, your head's going to stick out. So the next step is going to be usually, you could do it either way, but mostly, most often you see start with build the back yoke of your sweater. And so what that will entail is picking up stitches along this edge, um, usually working some short rows so that this dips down a little bit the way that uh, your shoulder naturally does, slopes downward a little bit, um, and building until you reach the point where you want to create the back of the neck. Then you'll connect it to the same amount of work that you've done on the other saddle and bring them together to finish building the back. So we will talk about that more in the next lesson in our sweater workshop, Learn to Knit a Saddle Shoulder Sweater.